Um, I am asking that we don't use to do it, but I am asking tonight that we sing the Black or the Negro National Anthem is actually the correct thing after the Black so, um, Pledge. Um, to me, it would be an honor to us, all of us really, and we have the words and everything here. So you don't have to sing it, but I asked her to, and I, the young people singing it, that makes me excited. I taught in Chicago for five years and we sang it every day after the Star Spring of Banner. So if you would please tonight, can we do that quickly? Please? Yeah. Okay. Let me uh, yes, share my screen. People call it the Black National Anthem. It's actually the Negro National Anthem, but let's do that real quickly. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Okay. Mm. Thank you so very much. Oh, thank um, you. Thank you for wanting to share that with us. Thank you. Yes, thank yeah, it was actually very catchy. And, and I like the words. I love it. Yeah. It I'm really never... should be saying all the stands. It's supposed to be placing the verse first, but it should be saying it all. But now you heard the words. It's a beautiful song. It is a beautiful song. Okay. Hi, I'm Nicole Hockley from Sandy Hook Promise. I know this is hard to hear, but it's important. The shooter who murdered my son is that carried from an AR-15 in my elementary here? school 
and okay. killed 26 people. In oh, wait a second. Turn off YouTube. In those four minutes. It's gone now. Okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I thought I stopped sharing. It didn't stop though. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's continue here. Okay. So now, um, Madam Membership Chair, do we have uh, a quorum? We do. Thank you. Uh, so now the minutes, um, Lisa, I don't remember, were the, um, were the minutes uh, distributed with the agenda? Yes, they were. Okay, so I'm gonna ask for approval of the minutes as uh, distributed. Can I get a motion for that or any changes if someone wants changes? I'll motion to approve the minutes as distributed. Okay. Oh, Shirley, you have your hand up. What? A second, then. Okay. We have a second. Okay. Let's uh, have a vote. Please use your reaction buttons or your hand, whichever you feel more comfortable with. Okay. All right. The motion passes. There we go. Okay. Hello, Maribel Nunez. I see you're here now. Okay. Now we're going to. All right. So I'm going to introduce next is um, Denicia Goss, who is um, the um, the city clerk for the city of Riverside. She um, has also been. Um, managing the redistricting or reshape Riverside process. You can see on the back of her wall there, it says reshape. Uh, so um, we thought it would be good to um, have someone come and explain a little bit uh, about what was going on with the redistricting process, because I think there's only one or two more public meetings. So Denicia, you're on. We can't hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, I uh, I need to share my screen if I can. Sure. So Lisa, can you let her share or? Yeah, you can share now, Denise. Okay, let's see here. Okay, first, Madam Chair and uh, members of Democrats of Greater Riverside, I first want to thank you for this opportunity um, to share with you a little bit about um, Riverside's Reshape Riverside redistricting campaign. Um, as the Madam Chair had mentioned, we have been going at this for about a little over a year now. Um, the city council back in January of 2022 uh, deferred their advisory the advisory role to the uh, Intergovernmental Government Processes Committee, excuse me, Inclusiveness in Governmental Processes <laughs> Committee. Which ICGC. Is made up, <laughs> we we know as ICGC, <laughs> which is made up of uh, the chairs, Councilwoman Cervantes representing Ward 2, Councilmember Perry is the vice chair representing Ward 6, and Councilmember Chuck Condor uh, also sits on the board on that committee representing Ward 4. Um, they they held their first meeting in August of 2022, where they conducted their first public hearing on Reshape Riverside. And between the months of August through December, we held a series of community meetings, which I will go into detail as I get into presentation. But I just wanted to introduce that to you that the city did have an advisory committee oversee the process. They recently referred some maps to city council for their consideration. So let's see here. Okay, there we are. So a little bit about what I will cover today. I will cover the redistricting basics. What are the requirements for redistricting and the criteria that uh, the city must follow when adopting their, their uh, new war boundaries? The importance of community of interest and what we have done as a city to ensure that communities of interest have been taken into account and those testimonies have been 
uh, provided to the powers that be, in this case, the ICGC and the city council, uh, public testimony on communities of interest, how you may submit public testimony. I'm gonna go into the current census data a little bit. Um, and because of time, I won't go into the maps, but I'll, I will talk about next steps and how you could uh, obtain uh, a, a, a look at the maps that have been submitted thus far for city council's consideration. Uh-oh, it's the enter button doesn't work. Okay, what is redistricting? Do you see that on your screen? Yes, we do. Okay, so redistricting is a process for adjusting the war boundaries every 10 years after the release of the U.S. Census data. You you may have heard a lot about this on the, on the congressional and state legislative districts. Um, they recently went through the assembly districts, the supervisorial districts went through their redistricting process back in 2022. But because of the city's uh, election, they recently back in um, 20, 2020, 2019, excuse me, changed the charter to change the election dates to coincide with the statewide general election in even number of years, opposed to odd number of years that extended the city council's um, terms by one year. So that way they could get on the election cycle with the statewide general. As a result of that, the city had the luxury of waiting for all the other agencies to complete their redistricting process before we stepped into our process. So we could get a real good demographer. We went through a, um, a procurement process with through an official bid and we acquired redistricting partners, which is a very well-known, um, a well-known demographer. Uh, they have assisted six of the 10 largest cities in the state. None of their cities uh, that they worked with was uh, sued for the uh, plan that they adopted because of their reputation and because of their skill, walking those legislative bodies through the process to ensure that the community was heard and that the um, their maps were legally sound. But beyond creating wards of equal population, redistricting is also a, a, a mechanism to empower local communities and to preserve voting rights. So uh, what are the required uh, redistricting criteria, criteria. We have a rate criteria that we must follow for our redistricting process. And uh, those are as follows. It must be relatively equal in size. And this is by people, not by citizens. Um, so again, we use the census data to ensure that um, the war boundaries are equal in population. I'll get into that a little bit further in the presentation that the war boundaries must be contiguous, that they must not, uh, the wards may not hop around or jump around, that the line is a single line around the war boundary. Uh, this is one that is very important to this process and it must maintain communities of interest. And um, I wanna just go into what is a community of interest really quickly for you. Um, I wanna give you the textbook definition. I think that will be helpful. Excuse me, I'm trying to toggle through my screen and the one that I'm clicking is not lit, is not. It's okay. And there it is, why isn't it opening? Well, I don't know. Is that so your enter button isn't working? No, it won't toggle to it. Maybe it's behind the presentation. You know, can you click on it? That's what I'm trying to do now. Here's the see if I stop sharing real quick. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, you're not the first one to have a problem with this. 
Yeah, I, I, I apologize, but it, I think it's important that we know what the, I can give you my version of what the, uh, okay, here we are. So communities of interest is a population that shares common social and economic interests that should be included within a single district for the purposes of its effective and fair representation. Communities of interest do not include relationships with political parties, incumbents, or political candidates. So when we look at the criteria, let me go back to share the screen now so we can go back to where we are about communities of interest. Okay. So when we look at maintaining communities of interest, again, incumbency, is not a community of interest. That's not something that can be considered when drafting the war boundaries where the incumbents live or their place of residency. Also, political parties. Political parties are not uh, a part of the process. It cannot be um, established as a community of interest, along with um, future candidates running for public office. The uh, the war boundary must be easily identifiable and understandable uh, the, and understandable lines. You should be able to look at the map easily and identify where you live in that map and that it don't really have all these weird and awkward shapes. Uh, one, one that comes to mind is like, for, for example, the 91 freeway in the city of Riverside, perhaps that could be a dividing line of war boundaries across the city. Um, keep wards compact with appearance, with appearance and function. Uh, so when we look at, for example, the um, the green belt, right? The green belt is it, it takes up a lot of area geographically, and one could one could say that that's a community of interest, and that whole green belt should be in one ward. But is it functional? That's a question for the city council to answer. Would it be a, or even the Santa Ana River? That's another one that um, that could that spans across the city. But is it functional to have all of the river in one ward? So three critical questions to ask yourself when identifying a community of interest is does the community have a shared culture, characteristic, or bond? Is the community geographic in nature? Is the community able to be mapped? So one can say like my community, we're all Dodger fans, right? We may have an interest, but that's not a community of interest in, in the context and in terms of redistricting. But that is a community that could be a, our community of interest. We can believe that is, but it's not mappable really. It's really more geographic in nature when we're talking about communities of interest. A good community of interest, like um, we've heard a lot of testimony about the Casablanca community. There's a lot of rich history there. And uh, um, there's been a lot of testimony to keep that community together and not split that community within, within two different wards or three even. Um, another one that came to mind is Wood Streets. Um, we recently have one that's not uh, population generated, but it's actually an industrial area up in Ward 1 where there was uh, communities of interest submitted to keep all of the industrial area up in Ward 1 together. Uh, so that was geographically, um, it was geographic, we were able to geographically map that community of interest. How would you describe the community's relationship with the jurisdiction and how it is affected by the policy decisions made by the elected officials? So another um, another example of that would be, for example, up in Ward 7, there's a equestrian community. Um, policy decisions for equestrian uh, that may be, uh, that may support the equestrian community uh, could be an argument for a community of interest. So that these are the three critical questions that you would ask yourself when identifying your community of interest. So there's a couple ways that uh, we have asked 
for the communities to submit their uh, communities of interest. We provided tools. Um, you can submit testimony. You'll hear me talk about COI. That's just the acronyms for community of interest. You can submit those verbally at the public hearings. At all of the public hearings, we have translators, both in Spanish and uh, American Sign Language, also known as ASL. Uh, they're available at all the meetings. They were also available at all 18 uh, community workshops. We held a workshop, we held, excuse me, we held two workshops in every ward uh, between the, the course of August through December. Uh, we went through the first round before any maps were drawn. And then we went for a second round after maps were drawn so we could get community testimony and community feedback on the maps that were submitted at the time. Um, you can submit your testimony in writing. We have COI forms available at all of the public libraries, City Hall. You can find it on the city's website, um, or you could just email your testimony to reshape Riverside at riversideca.gov. The two types of map submissions that we're looking for are community of interest maps, where if you want to map your community of interest, so that way we can relay that to redistricting partners when they are establishing the boundaries. Uh, and then also you could uh, submit your own map. You can go through and use a really cool app that's found on our website, Districter. And you can draw your own lines um, and your own war boundaries. What's really cool about this um, application is that it will do all of the tabulation for you, the population tabulation and the CVAP. And CVAP is short for citizen voting, excuse me, the acronyms for citizen voting age population, which I'll go on to a little bit. Um, and it will tabulate all of that for you. So the guesswork is not necessary, it is not necessary. And you can submit the map directly into Districter, and uh, it will be submitted to City Council for consideration. So I wanted to talk about the existing lines. This is the existing war boundaries. Uh, so you can see and put it in context uh, where we are today. Uh, and then I also have these census data uh, relative to uh, our. Uh, the war, the current war boundaries and how they shaped up. Well, there's a, the population amongst the wards grew relatively equal. So no one war uh, stood out greater than the other. The standard rule and the rule for the Fair Maps Act is to maintain a deviation of less than 10%. Our total deviation right now is 8.2%. So we are under the threshold of 10%, um, but because of the Fair Maps Act, we must go through this process to ensure that all COI testimony is received and considered and that this tab, excuse me, this, um, I want to draw your attention to the bottom of the screen, the uh, table at the bottom, which is the citizen voting age population. This is another um, component to redistricting. And this um, CVAP is related to three protected classes in the city of Riverside. And it's the Latino, Asian, and Blacks, uh, and Black communities um, that we must consider when we, when we ruin our redistricting process. And, and I want to draw your attention to the Latino CVAP which is one, two, three, four, five. The fifth line down under the under the table, citizen voting age population. Um, the it's important that the city consider its war boundaries because there's opportunities for what they call majority minority districts. And what that means is because the Latinos are a protected class, they are the minority. But in certain areas, their citizen voting age population determines that they actually have a majority. So it is intended to uh, draw the war boundaries to ensure that any um, candidates that are looking to run for office in those particular wards have a, a, a chance of electing its, um, a candidate of their choice. 
So uh, the city council has taken a lot of testimony and received um, education from the demographer in that regard. And so the city council has determined that they're looking to adopt either a, a war boundary that has no less than three majority minority uh, war boundaries, excuse me, no more than three majority minority districts. And in this case for the city it would be wards. So what are the next steps? Uh, we have two public hearings remaining in this process. Um, the city council will meet this coming Tuesday to host their second public hearing. At that time, they will review nine, um, nine draft maps that have been either submitted by community members or by the demographer. Um, excuse me, we had one map that was submitted anonymously. We have another map, oh, actually two maps and one coin testimony now at this point by the Brown and Black Redistricting Alliance. Um, all of the maps that they've submitted has been uplift, uplifted and, and being considered as a viable map for the city council to uh, adopt. Um, we are hoping that the city council will approve their final plan in March of 2023. The city has launched a reshaperiverside.com website where you can find all things redistricting on this page. We have videos from our previous meetings. We have all of the map submissions that are being considered, including the COI testimony that you can review. You can find that districter app on the website as well. This website is identical in Spanish if necessary, if you need to. Um, to uh, visit that website. We have all of the information provided in Spanish as well. And I would encourage you to look at the website. It's a wealth of information there. And uh, with that, Madam Chair, I will conclude my presentation and answer any questions you may have. Uh, I have a, some questions. Do you know what maps are actually being considered or are they considering all maps, all of the maps? I do. So I, so here on this screen are the four maps that were submitted by the um, ICGC. So they uplifted A3, draft B, C2, and D to the city council. And then out of that, some, some, some uh, more A series was um, considered. So A4 is now in play. Uh, there's a, in the C series, we have C2, C3, and C4 now up for consideration. And in our D series, we have D, uh, D, D2, 3D, uh, D3, D4, and D5. So we have approximately one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine maps that will be considered on Tuesday by the city council. And hopefully at that meeting, they will narrow it down to less, to three or less. Uh, can you, are you able to show us a couple of the maps? So I can show you um, the maps here that we have identified A3 through uh, D. And the reason I have, I'm, I'm, I'm not inclined to share the other maps with you is because I don't want to get in front of city council before they hear testimony okay. and receive uh, comments from the um, demographer on those maps. But okay. I am inclined to go over A3, B, C2, and D because okay. those have already been vetted by city council and approved, um, excuse me, by the advisory committee and approved to be uh, 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 uplifted to the city council. So let's look into it. Let's um, let's get into it. Okay, so um, A3 is a, like I said, was a, um, the third iteration of draft A, which draft A was a, a map submitted by our demographer. And through testimony and through comments made by the city council, we've gone through three iterations with A, and now we have A3. 
Now, this is the overlay with A2, so you can see the difference. And the reason why this A3 came into play is because there was testimony to keep the Wood Streets community together. And so the Wood Streets community will hold. This next map um, is the, um, the overlay of the neighborhoods, which neighborhoods are important in this process because we want to maintain and not split the neighborhoods. Uh, if we don't have to. And so I want to go into detail about the neighborhoods. Quickly. In order for me to open my screen, I guess I have to stop sharing and then open it. Bear with me a moment. Let me stop sharing just to pull up my matrix. Okay, now let's see how I can share this here. Okay, are you? Can you see the map again? Uh huh. Okay, great. Okay, so now looking at A three, A three uh, has four majority minority uh, districts. Um, it keeps 22 community neighborhoods together and it splits five neighborhoods. Um, so this is the overlay of the current war boundaries and how those changes exist. So the colors are the current war boundaries and the lines are the proposed war boundaries. So this particular, this A3 has probably minimal change, right? So in, in comparison to the others, yes, I will say this is one of the maps that have minimal change. Mm -hmm. This map, um, again, it has four majority um, districts or wards in this case. Um, it keeps 22 neighborhoods together, splits five. Um, it's easily identifiable, it's geographically contiguous, um, and the total deviation between the wards is 8.1%. So again, we're below the 10% um, requirement, but it's still at the 8.1%. Okay, well, thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? Are y'all being, I can't, and I can't, you have to uh, speak up if you do, because, uh, uh, all right, you need to, if you stop sharing, uh, okay. Denise, right. I can see whether or not anybody has any questions. Okay, um, are, is anyone interested in seeing the other maps, or you, uh, you're more than welcome to go to We Shape Riverside, you can see all of these maps and the information okay. provided, but I was prepared to go through the maps I know in the answers of time. Yeah, I, will, um, uh, I think, I think, yeah, and looking at the time, we probably, they should, they can do that, but I'd like anybody to ask you any questions that they might have. Maribel, do you have any questions for her? Uh, no, I'm here if anybody has any questions, but thank you, thank you. Okay, okay then, well, thank you very much for explaining everything to us. It's really good, we'll, we should all go there on the 21st and see what's uh, being accepted and or not accepted, uh, get our two cents worth in. Uh, thank you very much, Denise. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you all for the time. And I will encourage you to visit, to come to the city council meeting on the 21st or call in virtually if you are unable to attend. We will have printed maps in the chamber for you to review uh, so you can see them live and in color. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank and you thank you for taking night. your time. Thank you very much. We really appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Have a good evening. Okay. Thank you. And then Freya, I don't know if I could say a few words. Oh, sure. So hi everyone, uh, Maribel Nunez, um, part of the Brown and Black Redistricting Alliance. We have you know, Dr. Regina and a few other folks here that are part of our coalition. And we've been at it and Ms. Denise has been very uh, informative and answers all our questions when we have them in between meetings. So thank you so much, Ms. Denise. 
And yeah, please, I really encourage you can, if you can't make it in person, call in, zoom in, do e comment, do email. They need to hear from everyone. I think they heard enough from me. We need to hear new voices. Uh, and so we're always, we've been engaged in every hearing and every meeting, and we're excited that now it's going to city council. And so, yeah, we're excited that one of our maps get, did make it to be reviewed. And uh, we are going to, it's, um, it's um, I couldn't mention, but um, for us, uh, we were listening to city council and also thinking through like what our communities of interest and then upholding the Voting Rights Act, that we are moving forward with an A3 um, and adding the Northside specific plan because it seemed like it was in alignment with our community, like the major points that we want. And just hearing how the city council was react, responding to some of the maps, A3 seems to be one, another, had a lot of alignment with what we were hearing from the community. So we will send an email tomorrow. Uh, and that's something that is in the attachment, but because it has like a, the Northside specific plan, which has a little bit of, that goes past the 215, the, it uh, takes up part of the neighborhood of the Hunter Industrial Park. A lot of Northside's residents approached us to make sure we add all of the Northside specific plan. And so that's why we made the edit. Um, and so A3, it's gonna be called A3 uh, modification. So I'll send you guys some information. Hopefully um, you all can support, but it seems like it has a lot of what we want and just hearing from city council, it seems like the, the, the four votes are there to move something like that map. And it does have the, the three Latino CVAP and then one strong community of interest um, upholding Casablanca to, to be with another, to be in a more of a Latino majority kind of ward um, compared to being part of Orange Crest and another. So we have a very strong community of interest map. So I'll share more information and thank you so much for the time. Thank you. Thank you, Maribel. So, so Maribel, is, um, your group is supporting A3 and D5, if I'm correct, is that correct? We are going to move. Um, we're going to move forward with, and and we ha had uh, reached out to the signatories, and uh -huh. so we haven't emailed everyone else that wasn't a signatory, um, for because we have like dozens of people that are supporting our map and Dr. and we talked to Dr. Regina and others, that we felt we A3 was the way to go to, to make sure because in the end it's no independent commission, it's city council that's going to decide, right? And so we have to kind of listen to also what the city council and if it aligns with what we want. Um, then, you know, we, we, we got to go with what we think is going to move as well, right? So A3 modification is the new map. We're not going to be, uh, our, at least our coalition is not going to be um, advocating for, for any of the D maps. Okay, so it's just A3 now. Modification, that's the new title, A3 modification, because okay. we added the, it's pretty much everything of A3, but just uh -huh. adding in the Northside specific plan, which is a little piece that goes past the 215 freeway that technically is part of Hunter Industrial Neighborhood part in Hunter Industrial Neighborhood. So there's mm -hmm. A3, but but it, the title, when you go to the website, to the city's um, agenda, you'll see uh, it has a list of maps. So technically it's A3 modification is the, the actual name. Okay, all right. So we have uh, two hands up, uh, Brock. Um, yeah, and maybe um, I missed this when you were presenting, Donicia, but um, can you briefly maybe share what kind of what the, the timeline looks like? Like when will do these go into effect and how does that impact the current kind of city council structure? That's a very good question. Thank you for that. Um, so these, um, the, the new war boundaries will go into effect for the next um, city general, center, the next city general municipal election, which is in March of 2024. Um, and how would it affect? Well, it depends on which map uh, city council choose, how it would affect the city council. One of the rules um, is, um, it's like, for example, if the war boundaries by circumstance places two uh, council members in the same ward, uh, they're, they're essentially will stay in office until their term expire or until the next election. So let me give you an example of that. So let's just say uh, wards, I'll pick on wards one and two for now. So wards one and two um, in March of 2024, ward one is up for reelection. But let's just say that uh, ward one and ward two was uh, combined together. Well, the, the residents, the residents of each member 
where they live. They just so happen to be in one ward now. Uh, one of the members who was elected in the second uh, ward uh, has a choice. They could either run for office in March of 2024, or they can stay in office until their term expires in um, June of 2026. Oh, yeah. that's going to be fun. <laughs> and so um, I do want to also mention um, um, uh, piggyback on what Maribel, Ms. Nunez mentioned about A3 Modified. Right now, A3 Modified is a COI testimony. It has to be uplifted by city council to be considered as a draft map. So um, I just wanted to put that out there because it is right now just a coy testimony. Okay, okay. And is that why you had your hand up? Did you have something yeah, else? That's okay. why I have my hand. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. This is a very interesting topic, and it's going to really affect, I guess, who our who our uh, council people are, who who is representing us. So this is an important topic, and thank you uh, for sharing. Uh, your knowledge with us, Denise, here. we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, and our next speaker is one of my favorite people, uh, Dr. Regina Stell. She's um, president of the, uh, and she's now making sure we can't see her head. <laughs> Where'd she go? There she is. She disappeared altogether. There she is. But now we can't hear you. I changed devices. Sorry, my battery was low. I changed devices. I'm here. Okay. Okay. Now we got you. Okay. So I said, I just want you to make sure you knew. I said, you're one of my favorite people, Regina. Uh, oh. Regina, <laughs> Regina is, um, you know, whenever I go and I ask her for help and, the, and or I ask her to assist or do something, she always does her very best to, to help. I really appreciate that. Um, Regina is the president of the NA, NAACP Riverside County branch. Uh, she's also a member of uh, the Democratic Party, AD58. Uh, and uh, let me see, what else do you do, Regina? Uh, <laughs> seems like a lot. Co-founded um, oh, Anti-Racist, okay. yeah. which I'm gonna talk about at the very end of my um, presentation, okay. but... Um, Seriously, this is you know probably the busiest month we had. But when you asked me to come, especially for the Democratic group, I'm like, yeah, I'm in the room because we need. Awesome. We're in the room. We just have to make it work. We have to make it work. We don't have a choice. So thank you for the invitation. Well, thank you, and now you're on, Regina. Okay. Well, like Fred asked me to share something tonight, and I don't want to go. Last year, I talked about the um, why we have Black History. I don't want to reiterate, but it started out being one week. Now it's a month. But the reality of it is this, and Priya knows I'm, I'm pretty much honest. I have I'm kind of mixed feelings about this whole Black History Month. <laughs> because it's a month of you telling your life. And I'm just going to ask you to go with me on this. Think about whatever your ancestry might be. Think about, think about that as I talk to you. You know, this is your history. This is where you're from. This is your people. That's your culture. So really and truly, my feeling about Black History Month is it is important because the man, Stigerson, who Stigerson started it, said it is we have to stop and pause and talk about continually the contributions of the enslaved people that were brought to this country. Whether you're African-American like me, I'm third generation, fourth generation. That history is American history. It's American history. Whether you're Irish, you're wherever you're from, you're part of the American story. We have the history of this is that we've carved it and shaped it, and for different reasons, I don't want to go into the ills of slavery. But tonight, I was thinking, what could I share? And actually, I still talk to all my college roommates fifty years ago, and we, I decided I'm just going to read you something. And as I talk about Black history. I want you to think about whatever country your ancestors are from. Because I think this poem kind of gives a summary to life, the essence of who we are from where we start. And at the end, of course, you will recognize the poet, not me. But here we go. When day comes, we, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never ending shade? 
the loss that we carry a sea we must wade. We brave the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace and the norms and notions of what just is, isn't always justice. And yet the dawn is ours before we knew it. Somehow we do it. Somehow we weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, is simply unfinished. We the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting a poem, reciting one. And yes, we are far from polished, far from pristine, but that doesn't mean we are striving to form a union that isn't perfect. We are striving to forge our union with purpose, to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. And so we lift our gaze, not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first, we must first put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true, that even as we grieve, we grew, that even as we hurt, we hoped, that even as we tired, we tried, that we'll forever be tied together, victorious, not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again sow division. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree and no one shall make them afraid. If we're to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the bridges that we've made. That is the promise to glade the hill that we climb if we only dare. It's because being American is more than a pride we inherit. It's the past we step into and how we repair it. We've seen a focus that would shatter our nation rather than share it, would destroy our country if it meant delaying democracy. And this effort very nearly succeeded. But while democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. In this truth, in this faith, we trust. For while we have our eyes on the future, history has its eyes on us. This is the era of just redemption. We feared at its inception. We did not feel prepared to be the heirs of such a terrifying hour. But within it, we found the power to be an author a new chapter to offer hope and laughter to ourselves. So while once we asked how could we possibly prevail over catastrophe, now we assert how could catastrophe could possibly prevail over us? We will not march back, back to what was, but move to what shall be, a country that is bruised but whole, benevolent but bold, fierce and free. We will not be turned around or interrupted by intimidation because we know our inaction and inertia will be the inheritance of the next generation to become the future. Our blunders become their burdens. One thing is certain, if we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. So let us leave behind a country better than the one we left. Every breath from my bronze ponded chest will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. We will rise from the golden hills of the West. We will rise from the windswept Northeast where our forefathers first realized revolution. We will rise from the lake rim cities of the Midwestern states. We will rise from the sun baked South. We will rebuild, reconcile and recover. And every known nook of our, of our nation and every corner called our country, our people diverse and beautiful will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade of flame and unafraid. The new dawn balloons as we free it, for there's always light if we 
only we're brave enough to see it and if we're only brave enough to be it. So that's the words of the 22 year old poetess, right? Amanda Gorman. I think she capitalized for me, 72 years old, what this quest has been and what it is. I think it's probably true. I think most Americans, we've all had different experiences. But this democracy, even though it's an idea, ideals, it's going to happen. It is happening. We just can't give up on it. Thank you for asking me to present. Thank you. You're welcome. And you said you were going to mention anti-racist Riverside. Yes, um, I was gonna say the story, but some of you know it, but after George Floyd, I mean, people just call me. I know a lot of people in Riverside, they were crying, a lot of my white sister friends, Caucasians called and I said, you know, that day I was just, all of us were, you know, just devastated across the world. I said, this is not a black problem. This is an American problem. This is, and we know, so we kind of cried together. And then we said, okay, we've cried, what are we gonna do now? And I said, you know what, this is my feeling. You can't change hearts. But the one thing I know from being an educator for 36 years is that information changes people. I mean, I grew up, you have fourth generation, black people. I mean, the more information you have, you can choose not to change your behavior. But the more information you have, the better your decisions you make. That's life. So I think groundswell, we should start having people read. And I've learned a lot these last several years. I'm reading books, listening to them. Really reading all of them, but you know, warmth of other suns. If you want to experience the black migration experience, listen to it. Warmth of other suns, S U N S, by Isabel Rickleson. There's several books. And so, anti racist is a group that's is growing, it's getting big. They have started, they now have done something I thought was just excellent. Found a resource called Truth, Racial Healing, and Transformation. And it's a process you look into and you work through it. I think it's, you can do like a five hour workshop and you can do a whole week also. But that's the place to start. On February 25th, from 9 a.m., that's, that's next Saturday, I think. From 9 a.m. to 12, there will be a virtual event that will talk about dealing with truth, dealing with racial healing and dealing with transformation. This is my dream. This is our vision to take this from Riverside throughout this county. Because I, I know, I think, I know it's gonna make a difference. We speak many times out of ignorance and ignorance will kill us. And truth and knowledge will free us. I'm just gonna stop. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Regina.